Okay, so you are welcome to uh, our uh, talk, international webinar on conducted by Department of Mechanical Engineering. Please take over the session. Yeah, thank you very much. So that we would like to share my slide. My yeah, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Yusuf Rosari. I'm happy to have this opportunity to meet and to discuss or share my experience and to talk about uh, the opportunities in uh, studying mechanical engineering. If you look around, you see that uh, mechanical engineering, particularly in, uh, in the world today, it's, it's about ev it cut across every aspect of uh, life. And for you to decide to be an engineer, that means you want to give service to humanity. And when you want to give service to humanity, you need to understand the basic principles of life. And looking at life and nature, you can always, you can always get along. You can always move with what is happening with your environment. And mechanical, as you said, is moving. So we need to move and better the lives of people, the environment, the society, and the world. Yeah, as I have been introduced, I, I have uh, studied mechanical engineering at the bachelor's level. And as you will know, I mean, during the course of the lecture, mechanical engineering is uh, broad, it's very wide. It, uh, it's it's cover a lot of scope. So I, I did my master's degree. Are you with me? Okay, okay. So my master's degree in met metallurgical and materials engineering. That is the behaviors, the characteristics, the formation and the, uh, of a uh, of uh, metals and the applications. So. Right now, um, uh, I'm, I'm with uh, the Smart Manufacturing Research Institute. It's a unit in the, the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in University Technology, Mara, in uh, Malaysia. You can uh, view the, the website and see the activities that goes on there. And there, I, I'm, doing, I'm doing my PhD there as well. Yeah. For, as I've been introduced earlier, after my studies, basic mechanical engineering, I was at uh, these are the kind of job descriptions you get when you when you have a, a degree of mechanical engineering. At least first, as a people engineer, when you finish, you have to go through training. As in, you know, when you are in the university or in the colleges, you've been taught about experimental techniques and you'll be taught the principles behind every engineering equipment. But for you to actualize or to relate the principles and, uh, and, and the, real, the real work, the real life, to, uh, you need to be taught, you need to be tutored you need to be trained you need to be under somebody to so that you understand how and how to implement it because of uh, so many things involved because of one regulations that means standards because of uh, peculiarities because of uh, what call it the environment the hazards that might be involved because you might not be able to understand how to operate some machines and all that. So that is that is why, in, as, as a fresh graduate, you will always have an offer or a job position of a trainee or a pupil uh, engineer in in whatever uh, field you can find yourself. After that, you look. Uh, while I was briefly at this place. We looking at the production process in an oil and gas company. Then we look at uh, the facilities. 
what are the what are the needs of uh, those uh, equipment? How do we renew? Look at the quality assurance, quality control uh, issue, so that there won't be accident. There will safety is paramount in every engineering principle. So, as a mechanical engineer, you uh, you are bound to know about safety. And if you go to any engineering company, you will see that you will put safety first. So, those are the principles behind uh, what we have. Then after that, we are uh, why the, during the course of the prog uh, program you will see what I'm talking about. Then I move to the uh, to this public service where you just look about the maintenance of equipment like the power equipment, the vehicles maintenance, and and uh, other instruments. However. You see that uh, the third job, I mean, the second job in description for all was when I was working with uh, the flour mills company. That is Dangote Flour Mills. It's a, it's a, it's a food processing industry. It's a, uh, and when you talk about uh, this, so many uh, lines or chains of process, there's so many process involved from uh, the raw materials to the, to the storage to the cleaning, to the manufacturing itself, to the packaging, to the to the to the uh, what do you call it? To the loading and and all that. So it it is a chain process. So uh, engineers, particularly mechanical engineer, because as a mechanical engineer you have idea. Of virtually all other engineering discipline so it enables you to be able to monitor evaluate the production process and as an engineer you are the best uh, manager when it when it comes because you understand the economic value of everything so you'll be able to know that oh this material will cost so so amount am i going to get uh, 70 percent 80 percent 90 percent efficiency of this what is the production costs so those are what you tend to understand or do as a mechanical engineer when you find yourself in a processing industry and again because of uh, issues uh, problems we need to train other people then we, we need, uh, in, uh, as an engineer, as a trained mechanical engineer, you can be you can be training other engineers, and at the same time, you can try to solve problems within the whole world. Problems relating to your field. You specialize in a particular area of mechanical engineering. Then you do research, try to see what exactly are the new things. What can you invent? What can you bring about based on uh, uh, engineering principles. So that is why, because you deal with, uh, you deal with, um, you deal with uh, components that can affect the economy, that can affect lives, that can affect uh, how we do things. So you 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 stay according to the standards. Yeah, engineering is as hard as man. Engineering is as hard as man. Right from the day one, we have been uh, engineering has been in place. You see the way they ex uh, do uh, mining before, do uh, molding, do uh, ca casting, do every other aspect before has been in place. So what the what. Uh, was not there before now is the mathematical knowledge that is not there before now doing engineering there they have been doing engineering has been as old as man but now it is now looking at the mathematical and looking at the uh, very applications very materials if you see from these uh, pictures you can see um, meta processing you can see 
ceramics, you can see agriculture, you, you can see using all, you can see all the thermal uh, engines, and you can see a, as all the a thermal, a, a old cars with uh, just uh, thermal support engines. So those are the engineering principles that, that, that we have had before now. Now, structuring engineering, we need to move on. So what are the opportunities for mechanical engineers? You see, looking at the Newton first law of motion, that a body will continue to be in a state, either in its position or in its moving position, huh? provided there's no force acting on it. And if those force will act on it, that will be the tendency for it, for it to resist that change or to move faster or to stop will depend on the initial. So those initial now is what the university or the, a formal education will bring about in a mechanical engineer. So we need to put this at the back of our mind that there's a tendency to resist change, tendency to bring something to life, to make something look uh, uh, not the art artistics alone, because in major components, like the bridge, like the cars, you see it very fine outside. But what the component inside, how it moves, that is the beauty of mechanical engineering. So why do you, why mechanical engineering? You can see from this uh, picture that uh, all other fields of engineering, you cannot talk about it without having the mechanical input in it. Like if you look at civil engineering, you will see they will need your uh, mechanical equipment. They will need cranes. They will need the reinforced bars. The material to be used, material sciences, material characterization will be the mechanical aspect. You you will see the electrical electrical engineering, telecommunications, everything. The copper, the behavior of aluminium, the behavior to transmit the generated power. The power generated, or it's from where. It's either we'll talk about that later. It's either it's from it's from mechanical process. The chemical engineers, the thermal fluids, the the rate at which energy changes. The process. It's all from engineer. Then you when you want to as a computer scientist, or engineer or electrical, you you do, you can write a program. But if you don't understand the principles, the program will not work. And all these are applicable in aer aer aerospace and all that. As a mechanical engineer, these are what is expected of you to do. As I've said, broadest, big, oldest branch of engineering. So what's, why mechanical? What exactly do you like in mechanical engineering? They will have to be, do the plan. And then you design, what are the factors? What are the operation, operation factors? If a car will move, It look what uh what kind of a uh, engine will it take where uh, the safety the the ergonomics how will you sit inside it is that is when the engineers will not be able to make a design and engineer will again engineer will again sorry engineer will again uh engineer will again make drawings and 
how it will be produced. Look at after that, then you now test and analyze that, okay, does this meet the required standard that we think it, uh, that will be safe, economical and durable? After that, a mechanical engineer will still look at how do we produce this in mass production, with repeatability, that is, you have some something that you can go other places to produce it. The Tata you have in India, you can go to any other places to, to, to produce it, and you have the same efficiency. Then you look at the controls. The control systems, the, that is from each and every other aspect of those things. If it's in structures, you look at the installation, then operation and safety, as I've said. These are the major core major calls in engineering, in particularly in mechanical engineering, maintenance of mechanical systems. Those things will due to wear and tear. You can see when you have your new clothes, after some time, or your shoes, after some time you it will wear and tear. Same thing happens to mechanical systems. You need to you need to have to look at how is it been how what are the problems you try to fix and optimize that system sometimes so those are the major core expectations of a mechanical engineer you can you should be able to do all all this you should be able to do all these functions as a mechanical engineer able to do it then you can work in all that work three or four different industries as a mechanical engineer you can see from the list here these are just little as a mechanical where a mechanical can can work. So for this reason, we can where we can work. Look at the oil. You can see during the COVID, many people were still based on the ventilators. That's uh, the mechanical, those are mechanical uh, engineering effects. The fire, fire protection system, construction, manufacturing, water resources, eating, in environments where it could. Ventilate micro electromechanical. You cannot, you cannot always work as mechanical engineer. You can be a mechanical engineering consultant. What a consultant? We have a who will check. And understand what a design is expected of. So you, as a consultant, is to ensure compliance. You should ensure, ensure compliance at every time that it, it it meets the requirement. Then you generate report for your for the clients. Then you be able to assess or sustain or look at the how this kind of maybe system will work effectively, or you modify it. Maybe when they have a problem in an industry. They call you as a mechanical engineering consultant to come. Oh, come and check our system. What will what will happen? What we having this problem? You will go in there, check. Oh, based on your engineering principles that you have learned in the university, 
basically you've le- you will you will learn the basic engineering principles so those principles you'll be able to put it into reality of what is happening in the field then you can able to say there is a problem with your system we can modify it we can uh, we can optimize it we can we can you have to replace it it depends on your judgment you have to make a good judgment then you can make utility right now the world is looking at reducing a uh, uh, carbon prints yes you can go you can go to another place recommend a good better services that is good now let's look at the industries where we have uh, where you you can work as an as a as a mechanical engineer renewable energy yes okay okay so if you look at the en- energy uh, sector from the renewable which the world is looking toward if you look at the and for mechanical engineers if you look at the sustainable development goal you realize that and all the all the points all the agenda of the sustainable development goals mechanical engineers are relevant in almost 70 to 80 percent of those uh, points of the sustainable development goal now like in the renewable energy if you look at the renewable sectors here in the energy you realize in the winter in the wind turbines and energy it's basically all uh, mechanical in terms of structure in terms of uh, the wind digital, uh, digital uh, aerofoil designs and 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 the only thing that will be even the battery you will see that the battery or the, the storage capa- uh, capability and everything is still from mechanical because the, ma- the material involved and the processes are still mechanical. So even transforming, transporting the current produced will still go through a metal, will go through copper and, and aluminium. Huh? So if you look at that, Mechanical engineers are wide, highly relevant in the energy sector, like the solar energy. Solar and en- solar energy. The basic component of the solar energy is the solar cell, and the cell is made of pure silicon. We don't have. You cannot. Uh, you cannot have pure silicon naturally. The en- mechanical or material or metallurgical engineer will uh, be able to refine. A, a solar a solar a silicon to to have a solar gel or a, a pure silicon for effective uh, solar energy production same in the hydropower where you use water to drive turbines or you you've, you use gas to uh, 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 to drive turbines to produce energy like you have uh, generators if you have generators around you see but in the bigger form it is it is still mechanical engineering. The biomass energy is conserving energy in this in this place is still more of mechanical. So you see, energy sector alone might be in the electrical or something, but seventy to eighty percent of the processes of the production is more uh, in the hands of the mechanical engineer. So there's many opportunities, and the same thing goes to the non-renewable energy. Like in the nuclear reactors, nuclear reactions and everything, do can be used in other other phenomena. But in the energy sector, you see that uh, many 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 aspects. Uh, it's more in the mechanical aspect. So gas, energy, and all that. The the agricultural sector and food processing, like I've told you. I have worked in as a mechanical engineer. I have worked in the in the in the food processing and a um, company and in the manufacturing company as well. You see that uh, the the food. Let me the, the right right even at the agriculture in the plantation start to start plantation. The, you need a tractor. You need a, a rower, a plugger, all the mechanical equipment, all. Uh, the benefit for the benefit of irrigation, you can see from here. You can see 
uh, even to the storage, to the transfer, to the processing. These are mechanical equipment used. These are mecha mechanical engineers are needed in virtually all the sectors. And that is why you see that uh, uh, we need more of mechanical engineers and there's more prospect. Like I've told you, I've been able to work in the oil and gas sector. This is a picture of me here. This project was an o o uh, OP oil produ uh, producing license 98 of Adanga North Offshore installation, right to the commissioning. From the design to the commissioning, we were there to do this production, to do this. But I can tell you 80% of oil and gas jobs are for mechanical engineers because virtually from the designs to the planning to the safety to to after the maybe the geologists or the petroleum engineers have explored that okay this after the seismic investigation the mechanical engineer moves in and they will be the one to produce till that that's uh oil well is dry so for that reason Mechanical engineering have better opportunities. You can see subsea welding, but there are some other challenges, and which the challenges are, are the job opportunities again for engineers, mechanical engineers in oil and gas, like the corrosion. You have corrosion engineers who are mechanical engineers who will look at the corrosion protection, cathodic protection, or any other uh, method of protections, looking at the measurement at everything. And we look at the health and safety aspects. You can see where right here, there's always a radiation detector where you all around mechanical engineers are conscious of the safety of themselves and the facilities. So these are opportunities that we will, we will get as a mechanical engineer. There are so many, but these are just few of the areas where we can explore in the oil and gas. And that's why I'm just showing my own example. In the transportation, on uh, you can see these are the known, the known uh, te technologies, and you can see virtually in all transportation sectors, these are all mechanical uh, systems. These are opportunities. Now there are new opportunities. There are the unmanned area networks. I mean, or area vehicles. What do they do? They use the uh, UAV drones for camera for Telemedicine, in medicine, yeah, you can use it for telemedicine, but you see, it is mechanical. The only prob the only thing it coming in is the GPS, that is from the uh, telecommunications, and maybe, and the battery, and uh, yeah, and the motherboard, that is the computer science. Those, those are so now a multi a multitasking. So this will bring to me about what I will talk later on, about a mechanical engineer just not restricting yourself to your own domain now engineering has moved beyond your own domain it's more like a systemic engineering is a you have to know a bit of all other aspects of engineering particularly mechanical we they need to us in virtually every field like you can see in warfares in you can see on man uh, drones for for fighting and all that, and in military aspects. So that's another aspect of engineering. Fire protection and safety systems. That is mechanical engineering for you. Basically, in, in buildings and everything, even after the, if, if you look at buildings, uh, facilities, and every, and even your cars, your transport, you see mechanical engineers have done a lot of work to save lives for the benefit of people. You can see, uh this uh another advantage yeah i've talked about this we need comfort mechanical engineers provide comfort comfort when it's hot comfort when it's cold comfort to preserve our foods like this is, is a fridge or a freezer or an apron you can preserve your foods these are condition air conditioning each exchangers chillers mechanical engineers have opportunities to work in virtually all this and maintain this as well. Now looking at the biomedicine and biomechanics, you see that 
yeah there is, is a lot of advantage you will see amputees with um, uh, uh, artificial legs designed and much and produced by a mechanical engineer that is the that is it look at the ventilator settings these are mechanical engineers look at biomechanics uh, teeth production from here you can see that what the nml you, that was out for a for teeth is being replaced with the screw and the uh, and, and the teeth is and this is being casted this is casting or maybe forming on the road and you know and you have uh, you have a teeth, your teeth back without even every these are these are this is the method and there are so many other met, uh, uh, opportunities for mechanical engineers yeah material science this is a bedrock of mechanical engineering when you come to material selection components involved in designs production and utilization of materials is characterized by its structure the properties the classifications and the performance if i design something if i uh, i need to produce it if i i will need to know as a mechanical engineer if i'm producing it will it lose its property or not if i'm using the material how how will it be able to work if I, if it works then i will now look at what are the, what is the performance i will be able to give a guarantee that okay this material you can use it for two years these are the uh, material science aspect so you characterize uh, your materials so mechanical engineers are the brain behind all this structures these are your element these are the elementaries you get to learn from a university as a mechanical engineer and this will be your guiding principles for being a better mechanical engineer after you after your your studies and will give you opportunity to see to optimize to to produce new products to invent based on your fundamental knowledge because now you look at the properties of materials you look at the mechanical properties the thermal properties the optical properties if if it's required the electrical properties because you know the, the structure of a, of a of a of a metal or of a component you can determine the electrical uh, uh, the electrical properties you can determine the chemical properties you can like in metals now we can look at the mechanical properties based on all this the bending the strength the ductility and if you look at every component every component every every component i mean every item your phone your gadgets anything you, you think of these properties are what makes it the, gives it the quality you need so that is why uh we as a mechanical engineer you are virtually in all aspects of life and there's all opportunities for you only if you know only if you can explore so that is it yeah now we look at uh, the classification as i've said metal polymers non-metals ceramics composites the, as a mechanical engineer you know that okay i uh, you cannot use polymer or you it, it, you can use polymer probably you in an it application to what extent you can know from the thermo is it, is it thermoplastic material or thermo set material and all that so when you you have that mechanical engineering uh, discipline you will be able to in you'll be able to advise or talk to anybody in other field of engineering or so you'll be able to know and it gives you added advantage than every other field of engineering look at uh, then you now look at the performance of these materials which is very very important so that is your end product you want to see will it affect this 
will crack will it propagate will the, the when will the uh, material fracture what what is the corrosion resistance how will it wear so those are the advantage yeah in iron and steel production this is a very very big industry where there's tons and tons and tons of application of a uh, uh, reinforced bath sheets in construction in in automobiles in space in everywhere yes luckily indian is like is has been ranked this has been ranked the second in uh in second to third in the production of after china and south korea so or even second right now second for uh, from this uh, second so what's these are fee, these are opportunities where mechanical engineers can work and it's a big big very big uh, industry because virtually all structures will need and will use uh, steel or iron or or the alloys in any forms sports and creations if you look at uh, sports you would think mechanical engineers are not there but looking at this drawing this is a mechanical drawing huh so if you look at it you realize that uh engineer look at this look at an engineer was here because you were able to ease the design to ease the problem in sprinters in every aspect you know uh, you have been able to make a shoe very light and still as the doctor see as the dunlop aspect mm? so these are uh, where engineers particularly mechanical engineer i can tell you are very very useful as a mechanical engineer your rackets you know the force you know the load that you can use that you can know the, you know the materials that will that that the ball the, that the tennis ball will impact maximally to so that this, this net will not deform and you know if you leave it here so you know the kind of materials you know the kind of force you have applied you know the kind of uh, things to use that is another advantage of a mechanical engineer and that is why you can do better uh in cricket you can see i think this is common in in uh, indian you see that this the the gauge everything it is the it is, it is these are the products of a mechanical engineer these are the opportunities you can explore you, these are the opportunities if there's some challenges then we can improve on it yeah you can see in basketball it's not the design has made this man dunk his ball and still hold on to the net see hold on to the basket sorry that is that is where mechanical engineer comes in. He has done his design properly. He has looked at what is the average a weight of a man, what can it carry? So what if he, if two uh, basketballer hold it, can it can it stand? So those are the design aspects. And when it comes to performance, it will always achieve. It will not fail. So those are why mechanical engineers have better opportunities in the design aspect and every other or every other things in the construction you realize that uh virtually if if a mechanical engineer is, in, is not involved in construction there's no construction there is no construction so you see that virtually all the equipment used are more of a mechanical equipment and these equipments are being maintained utility the performance and all that the cranes the reinforced bars everything so even the drawing you can interpret so those are then the safety as a mechanical engineer you can be the safety officer in a construction site so those are and opportunities of being a mechanical engineer but you know that from the beginning engineering materials comes 
from the earth, come from the soil, and it tends to go back to the soil, except for synthetic materials, like the polymers and all that. But, for, but the synthetic materials are now even dangerous to the environment. So we are the one to manage as a mechanical engineer, since we know the science behind it, to understand how to prevent, maintain, and inhibit, that is what, that is to reduce the process of, of uh, going back to its original state. So mechanical engineers knows and prevents corrosion. It is a big industry as well in mechanical engineering. Microprocessors are everywhere. If you open the car, your car or your any other new modern cars now, you see many sensors than the previous times. Yes, these sensors are used to to ease and to minimize the use of uh, space and materials. These sensors are used for safeties. These sensors are used for calibrations. So this. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The, if you don't understand the principles, how do you how do you this how do you make, uh, ensure the sensors or the algorithm for the sensor works? That is where the mechanical engineering takes over jobs of other fields. As a mechanical engineer, if you go into the micro P microprocessors, electro electro mechanical aspects, before now we have a big uh, turbines, big uh, uh, steam engines, uh, cars, steam engines, uh, big, but now it is electrical motors, electrical motors used. So that is it. Mechanical engineering basically can be within the manufacturing, thermal, automobile, material, corrosion, sport engineering, but the interdisciplinary engineering where mechanical play a role is far 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 more than the real uh, mechanical engineering itself in the aerospace we have the we have uh the main there but you in agriculture you as i've explained you see mechanical engineering uh in applied engineering where you see okay something is happening for industrial engineering you want to you want to make oh you see this man if you see something coming or you see a system you want to make it uh, auto, uh automated a mechanical engineer comes in there a biological engineering you see how mechanical engineering plays important role in the building services engineering you have seen how the mechanical mechanical engineer plays important true in the energy we played more a role in the railway engineering mechanical engineering play virtually more more roads rules that's the rule that's they play more in, important role mechatronics mechanical and electronics electronics cannot come if they don't understand the mechanics military engineering in military engineering today you see in military generally, it's dominated by mechanical engineering. The type of armored vehicles. Armored, what is the principle behind armored materials, armored vehicles? Those are the density. You understand the density of that material. You can maneuver it, you can you can change and for the desired uh, properties needed. Nanotechnologies. Mechanical engineers plays a lot of role. Nuclear energy, petroleum engineering, I've said all this. But now, mechanical engineers makes a real difference. If you ask me why or how, because you help to solve many biggest global challenges facing humanity. We are the one carrying the loads because of our background of knowledge. You are the one uh, in uh, cyber securities. Mechanical engineers play a lot of roles, huh? And all the other aspects. So 
we even can create inventions that change the world. So those are the those are the advantages of mechanical engineering. Now the world has changed. If, uh, industrial revolution happens. You can see things are happening every now and then. The way you met your parents, the way they do things is changing gradually, gradually, gradually. And what is it? The first industrial revolution is mechanization of manufacturing that's using the steam engines, like I've showed you in the first picture, during engineering, water powers, water pumps. Yes, that is the basic principles. Later on, the second revolution, as I've talked about earlier on, moves from uh, thermal engines to electrical, I mean, thermal uh, powered engines to electrical motors. Electrical motors, I mean, electrical uh, motors to, roll, to power engines. Eh? And all that. The third aspect is when you bring robotics in. I control you control from uh, your microprocessor, uh, microprocessors and electro uh, micro electromechanical systems. You can put sensor in all the lines you have. I don't need to go from my first line of production to my last line of production before I get my results. This I've used in the third revolution. I've I've used and engaged in the production in the manufacturing industry. This and this. Making, but now it's about uh, the fourth revolution, which is about uh, Internet of Things, which is about uh, artificial intelligence. So, so how do you fit in as a mechanical engineer? Because already you have fit in in every other aspect, but you must not lag behind in other in uh, in the new trends of development. The boundary of engineering fields are fading. As you can see, the boundary of engineering fields are fading. We don't. It's more of a system and inter, systems engineering. So you need to understand how to how to inter, how to go within all the fields of engineering, like in mechatronics engineering. Mechanical engineers now develop softwares. And the softwares mechanical engineering develop are far better, far more in reality than any other any other engineering because they under this these are mechanical systems and they understand the principle more than any other fields of engineers. So the mathematics, the logic, the control of that system is, is easily represented by a mechanical engineer. So that makes you as a mechanical engineer have a better opportunity. So again, we have been able to do this. Then the internet of things. Internet of Things. We see mechanical uh, augmented realities and visual realities. What is Internet of Things that's making things to look more real? We have done this and it's working. Huh? Are you with me? So virtual reality is complete digital environment. That is, you have just the digital aspect without uh, understand with uh, with and um, visualizing what will happen in the real in the real experiment. But augmented reality is where the real world digital information. I mean, the real world is being digitalized. Then you can have a mix. Uh, 
a mix a mix uh, right like here now we have an augmented reality this is a real component well if it works if it starts working you want to know what are all the characteristics needed to ensure its optimum uh, optimum usage and optimum utilization to have a maximum efficiency that is augmented reality but in visual reality you have a drawing just it just the drawing this drawing will it gives what will it give that is the that is the visual reality and we can have a, and same here you can see a, this is a production system already in place and because you have a, a a software that can do this you just put it there you know the pressure you know the line you can see what exactly is happening you know the turbulence flow of this system without going through anything so these are the uh, these are the augmented reality and these are the trends in mechanical engineering in as much as you understand the the principles you need to understand the software as well yes it has been engaged in a, in blinds in a process and all that easy to control and monitor machines you can monitor your machines from the comfort of your office or from the comfort of your home even from a far away place to see the performance of that machine increase communication so you can comply with so many ethics you when using a because you know this is the pressure that needs to be done and it is documented there's no the, the strengthened ethics engineering ethics there's no you cannot cheat you cannot cheat so those are the advantages of this and feed testing you can do real, uh, real time testing real time testing is on the spot testing these are many advantages of mechanical engineering then visual simulation and testing like this is a part of my uh, work as a, as a as a phd candidate looking at a weld deformation welding deformation when you apply it you can see i have made a simulation of the real experiment here and i want to check how will this how will it distort how will a material distort if from this video you can see that during my welding process i have a three, three layer welding process i can be able to analyze the welding, the distortion, that is the weld information, the dislocation of the weld. Because I have once I can see from only this side, because I have clamped this other side here, and I have clamped here too in the simulation. Eh? So this is you can see this is the second cooling. So when it is third pass, you can see the eats moves again. It moves up after the third eating. So that is. The advantage of a simulation these are cost effective these are you don't need to waste the materials you don't need to try, do try and error so this will have given you a more to realistic uh, values these are the these are the uh, the advantages of uh, mechanical engineers the, and this happens in virtually all fields so another aspect is this you can see a5 mb I had this drive in 1956 and see a one terabyte micro SD card in 2020. There's a difference. There is a lot of difference. This difference is what mechanical engineers too have a challenge with, which is called generative design. It provides a viable design option. It provides a viable design option for efficiency. And with this, you see that the uh, this so many components are being designed 
are trying to reduce materials and at the same time trying to reduce uh they yeah, try to improve the effectiveness of the component like this is a this, this product you can see same with less material and more more power in system another aspect is the uh, additive manufacturing and metal printing or even other printing aspects this is the traditional machining you need a 20 kg I mean 200 2000 kg of forged billets Huh? to produce this after machining huh? but look at the number of chips you generated 1800 kilo, uh, kilogram of chips was generated huh? see so look at what is being wasted and reprocess energy is being wasted effort uh, manpower is being wasted time is consumed well in additive manufacturing you have a roll sheet or sometimes you have a wire of the same material and the plasma or arc eating of all together let me say 400 kg and with this 400 kg we, we can produce the same uh, 200 kilogram of finished machine products same as you have how is it done with very very low uh, waste of materials energy and other this is an example this is an example which is called wire arc additive manufacturing or additive manufacturing or meta printing you can print this component this pocket now can be printed from the design without going through machining milling lathing and Products. So those are the new trends and opportunities of a mechanical engineer. Machine learning, robotics. These are opportunities mechanical engineers have over every other in every every sector. The, re, the industrial revolution. What is it all about? What is machine learning? What is my, uh, deep learning? Artificial intelligence. This is the industrial revolution fourth. So you can see from here that the subset of machine learning which with, with which artificial neural network learn from vast amount of data. That is the deep learning. Machine learning is when you now improve. A program you improve your a system when you are exposed to more data without being explicitly informed that is machine learning that you already know this is how it goes this is but there is an a, a, a program that will give the machine that because these are not humans that all this is what we know as the artificial intelligence these are programs which are ability to sense reason and act like humans Mechanical engineers are involved. Mechanical engineers are involved with coding skills. Uh, with coding skills, you can do a lot of things. So you can do many finite element analysis interface programs and all that. So that there's a lot more to do as a mechanical engineer in this industrial revolution. You are the most important here. Skills needed to become a good mechanical engineer. These are the skills needed to become a good mechanical engineer. You must have a problem solving attitude. You must have a critical thinking attitude. You must be creative. Creative in the sense that can I do it in another way with limited materials? with cost optimization with effective performance mechanical engineers will have to know how to deal with people how to manage people how to coordinate others 
Then emotional intelligence is about how you interact with the high and the low people within your workspace. The cadres, you have different cadres in, in engineering. You have the technologists, you have the technic technicians, you have all others, and the experts, and the consultants. So your judgments should be firm. Should be firm, based on standards, based on uh, engineering ethics, based on, and you have to respect the cultures around you. That will give a good judgment. Negotiation, when it then cognate feasibilities, those are what a mechanical engineers are needed for. Remember, the fourth, the industrial revolution. These signs, these symbols, you need to understand. You need to look at them well and understand where do they fit. Mechanical engineers fit virtually everywhere in this space, and this is the future. Artificial the technologies, the technology we have it to make that technology digital by algorithm, by putting it into internet. That's by networking, by by the Internet of Things. Then the intelligence, programming algorithms analysis these are what we these are all mechanical engineers what else again do we need from these signs that that are not there in us as a typical mechanical engineer so the future is is us with mechanical engineers i will play this video for you to understand i don't make many of you have seen it but it's about uh how advanced mechanical engineering has gone in biomedicine. You can see this. When my daughter was six months old, I got severe water retention and then the chest pain started and the breathing problem and the symptoms. And I was really worried because I had a feeling it was something serious. They told me that I would need a heart transplant, but I was so unwell for a heart transplant that they had to give me a total artificial heart. Specialists at Harefield Hospital in Middlesex said it was their last chance to save Silva's life. It's the only centre in the UK that uses the device as a treatment for patients with heart failure. It costs £86,000, but how does it work? The portable device is able to keep blood flowing around her body. Selva needs round-the-clock care, and whilst the artificial heart keeps her alive, it's also given her time to reflect on her experience. One of the things that I realised when I was on that deathbed, and you know, one of them was to really not care about things that we get stressed about, like boiler problems or you know, car problems or heating problems. I really do appreciate life a lot more now. Heart failure was horrific, and I'm just glad to not have those symptoms anymore. Yeah. So. You can see you can see the advances in uh, biomed biome biomechanics and same thing is another this Three 
paper bags everywhere on me. It was like, and I have all this stuff every time you move. You're connected to a line. It was so much. Oh my gosh, how did you do basic things like take a shower and sleep when you have your heart in a backpack? Well, because it was electric, you couldn't really get in the shower, so I had to pretty much wash up and turn back. And then you found out that you were going to get a heart transplant. How has your life changed? My life has changed a lot. I feel like I was happy. Then I was scared again, like they had to open me back up. I just wanted to go where. And how long do you have to stay in hospital? I should be leaving before the week is over. The next few days. That is great news. And and would you recommend for other patients who have this same condition uh, to try out using the Syncardia device? Yes, I would recommend it. Because it, uh, if you have to do your other organs and sick, it will bring them back to where you will be 100% healthy and ready for transplant. Well, all the best to you. Stan, uh, Stan Larkin joining us this morning from his hospital bed. And we wish you... Uh, wish you all the best with your, your new heart. That's exciting. Okay, thank you. Our next guest hey, is You Luke. can see, that is how we, we can see many things happen here. Thank you for having me, Nandi. Huh? <laughs> you, so, so is there a question and answer? Yeah. I, uh, uh, very interesting talk. Uh, uh, Yusuf, uh, sir, very interesting talk. It was very uh, informative, and uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Now I I will ask uh, students uh, if they have any questions, they can uh, unmute their mic and ask directly to Yusuf, sir. Okay. Uh, no questions, uh, please. Uh, you, you you can ask anything uh, to Yusuf Sar now. Uh, this is the time for clearing your doubts. You can ask. Uh, I hope I, I hope you understand my language. I, is it clear enough? Yes, yes. It was uh, the talk was very informative, very deep. <laughs> you you cover all the aspects of mechanical engineers actually. It's very uh, very interesting. Okay, uh, I think uh, students don't have much uh, questions, queries. Uh, thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, it's very interesting, Yusuf. Uh, you you do uh, you spend your valuable time uh, with us. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, spending your time. Uh, all the best for your uh, future work. So we will keep in touch. Uh, Hope to uh, have more talks to our students to our uh, to make benefit uh, of our students uh, in the name of mechanical engineering uh, KME Engineering College. Uh, uh, I uh, I whole, from the wholeheartedly I uh, sincerely thanks to uh, you for your time and for your talk. Thank you, thank you thank everyone you for having me and thank you for giving me the opportunity. And I wish all our students. Uh, more more prospects because there's more prospects in mechanical engineering and i hope they they they, be, they become better things in life thank you very much nandi oh mommy <laughs> thank you okay, okay take care have a nice time